Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am here in beautiful Escazú, Costa Rica, on a sunny Sunday afternoon. I'm doing this in the afternoon. And today is Sunday, May 7th in the year 2023. And yes, it is the afternoon because I am going out later. My coach is having something at her house, and I'm going to go to that. So anyway... It is Sunday, and it is beautiful, and it's a beautiful thing that the eclipse has finally uh, moved on its way. Now, I'm not saying it's over. Notice that I'm not saying the eclipse is over. The eclipse in and of itself, the actual aspect finished on Friday, yes, and that was its 1458 Scorpio, which is about 15 degrees of Scorpio, halfway through the sign of Scorpio. And we are still with the lingering energies from that. So there's lots of things that are uh, happening that are reverberations. So, you know, when something happens and then there's reverberations. Um, If you clang a bell, there's reverberations. So it's a bell clanging in the universe and we are having some reverberations and you're going to feel emotions. Now, it's interesting because... Uh, you know, like I've told you in the past, like last week, that I had quite a time the week before, and that was in the middle of the eclipse period. And now um, it, the reverberations of that are definitely happening. But, in you know, the other thing that usually happens for me around eclipses is things get very busy. So I was out for half of yesterday. I'm going out later. I was very busy on Friday. And there's just all sorts of things to do and people asking me to go places and things that just aren't uh, normally in my schedule. And that's all lovely and wonderful. So, you know, that's why I say yes to things because normally, you know, maybe these things don't come along very often. So you say, yes, hey, you're having a little event at your house. Great. I'm going to come. Um, but they all pile up on the weekend of the eclipse. <laughs> so this is this is what often happens to me. Like lots of things happen during eclipse seasons. And so we take uh, we take our, uh, you know, our time. We work through this one step at a time. We're still in Taurus season, which is very methodical and all about one step at a time. And so the moon has moved on from Scorpio and is now in Sagittarius. Now, because the moon is in a new sign, you know, we can we can have fun. It's Sag. Sag is like, yeah, let's party. Let's do our thing. Let's let's have our celebrations. Let's like do the Jupiterian thing. Maybe a little overindulgence, maybe a little bit of shopping, eating, you know, whatever. Um, spending. <laughs> and when we get past that, you know, past the the eclipse, and we're in the second sign after the eclipse, it doesn't mean that we're finished. We don't finish technically the eclipse season until the following lunation. A lunation is a new moon or a full moon or an eclipse. So there's no more eclipses, not for six months, but the next lunation is Friday, May 19th, and it's a new moon at 28 Taurus. That new moon comes right after the eclipse. So that's the next lunation after the eclipse. And so, you know, new moons and full moons alternate. There's never like, oh, we're having three new moons, and then there's a full moon. It's it's new moon, full moon, new moon, full moon. So we just had a full moon. That was the eclipse, the lunar eclipse. And then we have a new moon at the end of Taurus. And that is the thing that kicks everything out. Now, what's interesting is that uh, I took a picture of this the other night, right? The The moon was so huge on Friday night. The moon was huge. And I took a picture of it, but there were so many clouds around it. And it's hard to take a picture of a moon. Um, you know, it's, it's unless you have like really good photography equipment, taking a picture of the moon is, is almost, you know, futile. <laughs> it's an exercise in futility. So, you know, but I like to do it because it's fun and it's it's so huge. You think it's going to be huge in my camera and it really isn't because of the distance of the camera and the distance of from here to the moon. <laughs> so, it looks so big in the sky and you're like, "Oh yeah, that's going to be something." Not as big as you think. Not as big as it is standing here in the backyard looking at the moon. (laughs) But it's like, wow, that moon is big. So big, juicy, full moon in Scorpio, right? With the sun in Taurus. It's big and juicy. So yes. So there we are with our moon. And it was close to Uranus. And 
I I have to say, just because it happened on Friday doesn't mean that the aspects affect your life on Friday. And it's, again, what my teacher used to call the fallacy of the partile aspect. I had surprises and big changes come the week before. And uh, it taught me a lesson and things taught me things about myself. And I learned things, but I really assimilated them during the eclipse. And, you know, eclipses, everybody's a little on edge. People are behaving crazily. So we we were at the farmer's market yesterday. If you watch my Instagram, you saw me talking to my cat, who was demanding, like, where I had been. And, um, uh, you know, I was at the farmer's market, and we go every Saturday. And there's, in Costa Rica, there are people who park your car, not really park your car like a valet, they watch your car while you have it parked. If you're going to a restaurant, oftentimes they are standing in the restaurant parking lot. And I don't know if the restaurant hires them. I'm not clear on that. But you damn well better tip them, okay? <laughs> you have to tip them. When you are taking your car out, they are standing in the parking lot of the open restaurant, for example, as opposed to the closed parking garage that you're in. And they stand there and they help you direct the car out of the lot or in the lot or whatever. But then also on the street, there's these, I can only describe them as clowns, that <laughs> um, tend to watch your car for you while you're at the farmer's market or wherever you are. And, you know, around the farmer's market, there's always, it's called the feria, la feria. Um, around la feria, there is these guys that hang out and they are clearly not functioning members of society. <laughs> that's, that's what I can say. They're clowns. <laughs> and there's one guy that is just so off the rails that <laughs> they were in high gear yesterday. <laughs> and when we were going, my friend Alejandro says, wow, they're really over the top now. They're like, they're like really on today. There's like, they're, because he was trying to pull out and leave and they were still going on talking to him in his window with their hand on the window and he'd already tipped them. There wasn't going to be any more transaction and they were already like standing there da, 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 and saying these crazy things. And I was like, yeah, see, see, see. Okay, hasta luego. <laughs> and, and it was so funny, but... I see, he's like, what is going on? I said, it's the eclipse. <laughs> it's the eclipse. That's what's doing this. That's why people are like this. And people who are in the fringes of society are going to demonstrate and act out these unconscious things for us. They're like a little dancing clown. <laughs> that, that acts out these um, unconscious collective unconscious stuff that shows up. Now, as I've told you, be careful, you know, don't go out with road rage and stuff. This was high energy. This was high emotional energy. And the emotions of that moon were very high. And it's been that way. So eclipse season is eclipse season. I am praying that things just mellow out from here. However, <laughs> Tuesday the 9th, the day after tomorrow, we have the sun meeting Uranus. And that is going to be 3.56 p.m., just about 4 p.m. on in Eastern Time on Tuesday the 9th. And this is the thing. The eclipse was close to Uranus. And sure, you know, but that's the moon and it was in an opposition. This is the sun, the other part of the eclipse, finally getting around to touching Uranus. So do I think there's going to be a, a final drum call in that? Yeah, probably there's something or there may be something relative to what happened um, or a breakthrough. And you can still have that breakthrough today, tomorrow, you know, most likely by Tuesday, but there's, there's a breakthrough. And I hope that everyone experiences this energy as a breakthrough in their life as relative to what the eclipse has shown them. So this can be, oh, that's what this was about, an aha moment. That aha moment that you get, that's why I went through what I went through. And I've sort of had mine, and it's, you know, why things were the way they are. And of course, I sat here and did my homework about it as well. But this experience of Sun and Uranus conjuncting, which they only do once per year. 
This is the annual sun Uranus joining. This is something we really want to pay attention to because it does only happen once a year and you want to be aware of this, okay? So this is something very profound and it is still part of the eclipse because Uranus was part of the eclipse, okay? So all that stuff in Taurus, Mercury is still retrograde in Taurus, and we've got another week of Mercury being retrograde, and that's good. That means that finally, finally, we're going to get a break next Sunday when, and it won't be when we meet again next week. It'll be after we meet again. It's not going to be till late night, Sunday the 14th. So that is Mother's Day in the United States. It is Mercury Direct 1117 p.m., Eastern Time. So you and I will be meeting on the station of Mercury and the station direct. So I really hope that any sort of emotional experiences people have had during this time gets sorted out and they find their way to break through instead of arguments, instead of, you know, heated discussions or anything. It's just... I'm, I'm encouraging people to find those places for themselves where they can actually get peace after all of this madness. And I think it was a bit of a mess. And, you know, I never love when Mercury retrograde happens during eclipses. I just, it's just more of the, like more chaos, you know, and it's just an uncomfortable experience. And so, you know, and I have to keep telling people to wait for things. I have to keep saying to clients and to friends and stuff, you don't want to do that right now. You want to wait. And it's hard to wait. It's hard to tell someone to wait three weeks. Mercury's retrograde. Ah, yeah, that. Well, guess what? When Mercury goes direct, you're going to find a different story. And this is the, this is the thing we have to remember about this. I, you know, I can sit here and people can call me perhaps superstitious or, you know, uh, you're adhering to that, but I found it to be valid. Now, I can't say that every Mercury retrograde does the same thing because when we had Mercury retrograde in December to January, remember it went at the end of the year and then it, it's rightened itself, it straightened itself out back in January, that was not the flavor that we have now. The flavor we had in September was not the flavor that we had in December. The one in January, December, January, I felt was much milder than this one and the one we had in September. And it could be that they are in some dynamic with other planets, but there are times when that Mercury retrograde really just drives you up the wall and you you don't want to continue um, just beating your head against that wall that you're being driven up. <laughs> you want to just sort of play ball with this, throw your hands in the air and say, I'll take care of this after the 14th of May, you know, and it's better to just wait. And like, there's things that I need to do or want to do and information that I have to relay to people and stuff. But, you know, certain things I have to like get on with business and other things, I'm just going to wait until Mercury goes direct that's only another week. What's another week in the grand scheme of things, right? So that's, you know, and then there's this sun Uranus this week. So there's still a lot of activity that we have been digesting slowly, because it's all in Taurus, um, digesting slowly in this period that we've been dealing with, you know, retrograde and eclipses. Um, you know, that Mars Chiron a week and a half ago didn't help. It didn't help. But now we have the happy news that Venus is in Cancer. And Venus is a lovely planet to have in the sign of Cancer. And it really is something sweet and I and juicy, juicy, and nature-driven and just beautiful. And, you know, I think in all of this chaos and messiness, Having Venus leave Gemini and go into Cancer is very lovely. It's family-oriented. It's gathering-oriented. It's sweet. It's gentle. It's not frenetic. How about that? Not frenetic. Something in these weeks is not frenetic. <laughs> so 
lovely Venus is sort of saving the day and saving our nervous systems and our emotions and our mental health, if you will. <laughs> so I really, I mean, let's face it, Taurus is a very lovely centered, grounded sign. But when there's all this wild energy passing through it, like a retrograde Mercury and eclipses triggering Uranus, it, it, is not ple it's probably really not pleasant for Tauruses, and it's not pleasant um, in many ways, even though we have to ride the wave. So getting back to Venus in Cancer, it allows for like gatherings and sweetness and joy and the sweetness of life and the nurturance of life. And it is really um, a time to just breathe, do lovely things for yourself, take a walk, let your nervous system calm down and just experience what is in this moment. Because this moment is right where we need to be right now, okay? And I think Venus and Cancer can help us do that. And Venus and Cancer is not in any stressful aspect to the planets that are passing through Taurus right now. Um, Gemini is more frenetic, like I mentioned frenetic before. It's not bad. It's just it gets your mental stimulation really happening and more planets there make more energy. So now Venus is in Cancer and she's friendly with Mars in Cancer. Mars is in Cancer too. And they are not conjunct, but they are both in the same sign. So this is actually lovely. Like the two relationship planets are in this very sweet place. And it's not Mars's favorite place. I know. It's not Mars's favorite place to be in the sign of Cancer. It's not going to be much longer, but it's okay. I feel like it's been supportive, again, to the planets that are in Taurus and that what we've experienced in these last weeks may have been tempered a bit by Mars sort of smoothing things out in Cancer with, with Taurus planets, you know, because they, they relate very well. Every other sign relates well. Okay, so if you have a friend that's a Cancer and you're a Taurus, vice versa, whatever, those work. The, every other sign, again, Virgo works with Cancer very well. Gemini works more with Leo, right? So it's, this is very pleasant. And right now, we do have a lot of energy supporting tradition. Mars and Venus and Cancer, all that stuff in Taurus, except for that wild Uranus, that wild card Uranus, there's a lot of tradition. And so maintaining our life, tending to our children, even if they're adults, tending to our family, you know, our home. In certain northern regions, it's spring, so you can do your spring cleaning. Um, in you know, Costa Rica, we have, it started to rain last week and it's not raining. It hasn't rained all week. So, okay, I'm not, I'm a not asking, but <laughs> um, this experience of, you know, a little tradition in this time of year um, is, is really very nice. In other planetary news, this is the last full week that Jupiter is going to be in the sign of Aries. Okay, so Jupiter is in Aries for the last week and this coming week and will eventually move into the sign of Taurus with everybody else <laughs> on Tuesday the 16th. Now that's not for another like week and a half, a week and a few days, but this is the last bit of, you know, Jupiter being in fire where Jupiter has been for, you know, on and off the last year. It went back into Pisces and stuff, but it really is this Jupiter in Aries is finished, okay? So it's winding down its last week. Now, if you have gained good things from Jupiter being in Aries, that is great. And Jupiter is a fiery planet and Aries is a fiery sign. And so there's a lot of buoyancy and optimism and stuff. And it's been, I think relatively good. I think it was a little complicated when Jupiter and Chiron met in Aries, and I feel like we're past that now, and Jupiter really is at the end. Jupiter is at 27 degrees of Aries, and it's really very close to moving to 28. So we're in these last moments. Now, if you have this prominently in your chart, if you know your chart, this is something where you want to really... Um, 
if this figures prominently, like do a little ritual, say gratitude to Jupiter if it's served you well. Like I have Jupiter in Aries, so it would probably behoove me to do a, a little thanking, a little thankful thing to Jupiter having been in, um, been in Aries, you know, and just sort of connecting with that energy that only visits me once every 12 years. And so, uh, if you're a person born with Jupiter and Aries, especially, or maybe you have a strong Jupiter in Aries or something, or maybe you are in Aries and Jupiter has been visiting you all this time, just, just take, oh, the dogs are barking, just do a little ritual for yourself and just thank Jupiter because Jupiter is the big protector. It is the big giant planet of expansion and abundance and protection and we have to acknowledge it you know sometimes when it's there especially if it's in your sign you feel like well yeah okay things are things are good but like you don't know what it's protecting you from you're expecting like a windfall of money a big raise a new car you know like big things big fast things and you're like but maybe when Jupiter if Jupiter hadn't been there, you don't know what, what things that you went through might have been worse or more difficult if Jupiter hadn't been there, you know, if Jupiter hadn't been there. So just do a little ritual if you've got that Jupiter and say thanks. We can all do a little thanks to Jupiter. Thank you for the last year in Aries. And then we move to Jupiter and Taurus. Now, what that's going to look like, and this is very interesting is that, okay, so this is like next weekend, we're already getting into next week's astrology a little bit, but it's important to pay attention because it's up and coming. And Jupiter, when it moves into Taurus, is going to be very close to the North Node. And one of the things I want to say about Jupiter going into Taurus, you know, Taurus, here we go again. Here's another planet coming into Taurus. And the sun will still be in Taurus and Mercury will still be in Taurus and Uranus will still be in Taurus. And so here we go. Here's another planet in Taurus, folks. So it's like this Taurus stamp again is, is not leaving. Now, what do we need to know? First of all, Jupiter is going to be only three degrees as soon as it enters Taurus. It's going to be three degrees close to the North Node now, but it's really, really close to uh, the North Node once it gets into Taurus next week. And that is something really profound. They don't do this very often. And Jupiter is, you know, about this big good stuff, right? And the North Node is about our true North, our fulfillment and Jupiter is showing you something that is profoundly important to pay attention to where that north node lands in your chart. And it's in Taurus and Jupiter's going into Taurus. North node's not going to stay there much longer, okay? Um, north node's going to, the nodes are going to change signs in a couple of months. But this is, this does not happen often. The last time Jupiter met Taurus was 2016. And I know this because this aspect was in effect when I came to Costa Rica for the first time. So I have to, so I'm going to say two things about that. One is that was a major, major turning point for me, but Jupiter went retrograde on the North Node back then and it stayed with the North Node a long time. That was a turning point for me, but now that it's coming back to that, I have like, okay, so you, you create an astrological chart for these events in your life and you create an astrological chart when you go to Costa Rica for the first time and your life is affected and changed. So that means I'm going to have a recurrence of my experience coming to Costa Rica. Okay, so that's really significant for me. That's just, I'm using me as an example. I'm not saying, hey, guess what I'm doing? I'm just saying, hey, so pay attention to this. That was the last time. That was 2016. That was seven years ago. They were in Virgo back then. Jupiter was not in Taurus. Jupiter was in Virgo. The North Node was in Virgo. And the North Node, again, is where we go in the direction of fulfillment opposite the South Node, which is where old habits die hard. And we tend to repeat things because it's easier. Now, Jupiter is going to help us do that fulfillment thing with the North Node. And it's in Taurus, which means we're do hearing more themes of stuff like abundance and uh, security and having a roof over your head and 
you know, figure out your finances and Jupiter's good for those things. But remember where we've been with Mercury all this time and, and like reviewing financial things, reviewing value, reviewing self-worth. So one of the things about Jupiter going to Taurus is going to be more of that, but it's going to be happier. You know, this Mercury retrograde, a little stress with the eclipses, this is going to be a happier feeling. Now, Jupiter and the North Node together should be a very karmic thing too. Like if something, for me, it was meant for me to come to Costa Rica. So something else like that can happen for you in your life, especially if it's a very important point in your chart somewhere. Now, the other thing is that Jupiter is going to do the retrograde thing later in the year, I think around September. And when it does, you know, because it'll do its retrograde cycle and then go back a few months and then come back again, but it'll all be in Taurus. Jupiter's going to go retrograde at 15 degrees of Taurus. What do we know about 15 degrees of Taurus? Well, let's see. You're in a station direct at 15 degrees Taurus. The uh, half of this eclipse was at 15 degrees Taurus. The sun part of the eclipse was 15 degrees Taurus. Mercury went retrograde at 15 degrees Taurus. These themes that we have lived, and then last year the eclipse was at 15 degrees of Taurus, right? These themes we have lived these months are getting rehashed again when Jupiter comes to that point and turns around. Jupiter is going to raise awareness of that. So you may go into these next months and then you realize what that eclipse was about. You may go into these months, realize what that Uranus was about, what that Mercury retrograde. You may, or it may heal all of the things that might have felt complicated and unwieldy and when things went awry or anything, Jupiter may come along and heal those things. So stay tuned for Jupiter. This is an important transit. This is an important transit. And eventually Jupiter is going to get very close to Uranus. And I've already like witnessed one lecture a couple months ago um, by a bunch of astrologers talking about Jupiter and Uranus. And they're already talking about it like it's going to happen and it's happening now. I, I'm a little more precise about these things and I say it happens next year because that's when the exactitude of it happens but honestly um, they're not wrong you know and I think once we feel into this we're going to feel a little more Jupiter and Uranus together in Taurus should be very good energy so we have something really important to look forward to and I'm glad for that you know this is a very protective aspect. Jupiter has not been in Taurus in 12 years. So I think it's really important. Go back 12 years into your life. Where were you 12 years ago? That was, you know, 2012, maybe, because remember, it's going to go into 2024. So because I remember, it was like 2011, 2012. I remember when it was in Aries back then. So think about how that worked and how that affected you. Uranus was not there then. Uranus was in Aries. So we want to look at this. I think this could be something really valuable, valuable, Taurus value for all of us. So stay tuned, stay at close attention. We're going to be talking more about that. The other thing that happens this week is Venus, since she's in the nice sign of Cancer, is going to talk very sweetly to Saturn, who is in the nice sign of Pisces. And it should be a very balanced experience that will be next Saturday the 13th and uh, in other worlds on Wednesday the 10th the moon will be in Aquarius and it will conjunct Pluto and this is only the second time the moon will conjunct Pluto since Pluto has entered Aquarius okay so this is something to pay attention to because this is going to give us more information about the meaning of Pluto and Aquarius for us I actually have a good feeling about Pluto and Aquarius, even though like people are already complaining about the like the AI and the chat GPT and which is so Pluto and Aquarius. So much of like this technology and people being frightened that this is going to take over. That's up to us, folks. You know, you got to stay clear on what's real and what's not. And, you know, we can we can make our own rules about these things and we can be very clear on this stuff. And we just we got to keep our eye on these things um, to not have them change our lives to a point that we is very uncomfortable and is not is not true. You know, so, yeah, the moon, Pluto, 
Aquarius, that's going to be Wednesday the 10th. So maybe more of these vibes and understanding of about what Pluto means to you in Aquarius, in your chart, and in your life, you will get a, a greater hint on that. So that's going to be at night, 1040 p.m. Eastern time, but the rest of us in other parts of the world will feel it at different parts of the day, and we'll see how that really works for us um, and what that Pluto message really is. And other than that, Mercury and Venus are going to have a nice conversation on Friday. That's the planet of love and the planet of communication. So it's a good day to tell your loved ones that you love them and show them that you care. A nice way to round out our session for this week. Thank you everyone for listening. The things you want to pay attention to are Uranus this week, Uranus in the sun, and this lovely Venus in Cancer, and then Mercury going direct. I can finally say that Mercury's going to go direct next Sunday. In the meantime, if you would like to work with me further, I have my new expansion mentoring program, and you can message me about that, info at thegoldenastrologer.com or deb at debmcbride.com, and I've been posting about it in Instagram, in my stories, and Anything that you would like to learn about yourself astrologically, please come see me. And you can contact me that way, or you can go to Instagram, The Golden Astrologer, and DM me, or you can go to my website and book a session, thegoldenastrologer.com, book online. I'm here on Sundays, and I wish you a beautiful Sunday and a beautiful week ahead, Sun Uranus. So enjoy it. Have that breakthrough. Gear up for a breakthrough direct your energies towards a breakthrough. Beautiful week ahead. Thank you for listening. Much gratitude to all.